everybody, it's Miss Marie. And today for STEAM Thursday, we are going to be talking about rain, which I know we've had a lot of this past month because it's April. And April is traditionally a month around here where we get a lot of rain, um, which is why we have that saying, April showers bring May flowers because the flowers are really blooming now from all the, the rain and the water that they're getting. Um, and so is the pollen, unfortunately, <laughs> for some of us who are suffering from our allergies. But so I thought for today, we would read a book called It's Raining by Gail Gibbons, who is one of my favorite um, nonfiction authors uh, for children. And then we can do an experiment on testing out different types of umbrellas. So hopefully you picked up an umbrella test kit at the library. If not, you can make one from things you have in your house that I'll be showing you later. But first, let's read this great book by, book by Gail Gibbons. Let's see, I don't know who does the illustrations. And I think she does the illustrations too, yes. And it's published by Holiday House. All right, let me scooch over a little bit so you can see better. Here we go. It's raining. Dark clouds fill the sky. Some people pull on boots and put on raincoats and hats. Other people pop umbrellas open. It's raining. Just like many days this, this past month. Rain is water falling from clouds. Water is necessary for all plant life and animal life to survive on earth. And people, see the people drinking and the dog drinking the water. This is a little illustration here about the water cycle, which is how water just keeps getting recycled in our environment. When the sun shines and warms the air, water vapor rises up into the sky. This is called evaporation. And it shows the arrows of the water evaporating into the sky. As the water vapor moves higher into the sky, the air becomes cooler and cooler. Water vapor soon turns into millions of water droplets. This is called condensation. You see it's all going up there into the sky, getting closer together. It's invisible, you can't see it. Sometimes you can feel it though, it feels humid. Clouds will form when enough droplets come together. As droplets join together, they become heavy enough to fall toward Earth as raindrops. You see they're forming some different clouds now. And there are different kinds of rain clouds. Stratus rain clouds that produce drizzle or light rain and are low in the sky. They are spread across the entire sky. There are nimbostratus cloud, rain clouds that are dark and bring steady, heavy rain. When clouds look dark to us, it is because there are so many water droplets in the clouds that the rays of the sun can't shine through. It does seem like that too, if you can feel it. <clears throat> cumulus rain clouds, I'm sorry, stratocumulus and altocumulus wind clouds produce drizzle or light rain. They are patchy, puffy clouds low in the sky. You can see a little bit of light getting through. Cumulonimbus. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. Cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus. Cloud, thank you, my daughter. <laughs> are dark, heavy, and piled up high in the sky. These large clouds bring lots of rain. Cumulonimbus. <laughs> it's a hard word. Science words. <laughs> the amount of rainfall during the year varies from place to place all around North America. That's our country here. And Well, this is the United States, our country. This is our continent. And this is the whole world. And you can see areas where there's not a lot of rain is this yellow color. Those are desert areas. And where there's a lot of rain are these green areas, super dark green, uh, which is like a um, uh, rainforests. Yeah, down here in Puerto Rico, parts of Mexico, or just right here where we are, is sort of moderate, pretty, pretty heavy rain. Not as heavy as a, as a rainforest, though. Rain helps determine the times of plant life in all regions of the world. It also helps create the level of water in streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans. Rain falls from clouds in different ways. Drizzle, which is just very small drops falling down. A shower, which is when raindrops are larger than a drizzle and they last for a short amount of time. Rain occurs when raindrops are large enough and come down steadily. A rainstorm is when there are gusty winds and rain comes down for a long time. And we all know what those, we've seen those. A thunderstorm, during a thunderstorm it gets dark and windy and raindrops come down hard and fast. 
Thunderstorms can be dangerous. There's thunder and lightning. Where's the best place to be in a thunderstorm? It's inside, right? <laughs> Sometimes meteorologists, those are the scientists that study the weather, warn people of an approaching storm and possible flooding. A flood can bring great danger. Flood waters can rise quickly and people, people living near streams, rivers, and lakes are sometimes advised by meteorologists and authorities to evacuate. Happens sometimes. After a major rainstorm or flash flood has passed, there's often damage. The cleanup crews get busy. So you know, a lot of times you'll find trees down, sometimes power lines come down. Sometimes while it's raining or just after it has rained, there is a rainbow. And the order of the colors of the rainbow is always the same. Does anybody know how it goes? Remember? Roy G. Biv. Here we go. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Roy G. Biv. And here it tells you how to stay dry outside when it rains, which is what we're going to work on today, an umbrella. How to stay safe during a thunderstorm. It's best to be inside, right? And... There's just some other ways that rain can infect us. Fog and drought when there's not enough rain, monsoons when there's too much rain. So lots of interesting facts at the back of this book too. So as I said, Gail Gibbons is one of my favorite authors for nonfiction for children. And this was a really great uh, book about rain, Teach, teaching us a lot and then very helpful pictures too. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera down. I'm going to bring over things that you'll need from your own house, a plate, some water, and maybe some scissors or glue, or tape. So we're gonna be experimenting. I'm only gonna show you a little bit of an experiment that I'm gonna do with some materials that I have at the library. But if you um, didn't pick one up at the library, you can do this with things from home too. You can use a little, I use a little dinosaur figure here. If you have any other kind of little plastic figurine, that would be really helpful. We're gonna see if we can make an umbrella to keep this guy dry. Now his feet are going to get wet, um, just like our feet. So, I mean, I suppose you could make little teeny tiny rain boots for him. I don't know how that's gonna work for me, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to make a sponge into an umbrella and see what kind of what umbrella it makes. I have some bits of straw that I've cut up. This also will be in your kit or you can get them from home. And I cut some holes into my into my um, sponge to fit the to fit the uh, straws in there. I'm gonna make a little tent sort of out of my um, um, my piece of, of sponge. And I'm gonna pour some water on the back of the sponge and see what happens. Oh, okay. Well, so far, so far his feet are dry. Let's keep going. Oh, okay, it's okay. It's absorbing a lot of water. Hmm. So far, so good. Yeah, he's dry. Even his feet are still dry. But what if we did a lot of water? What's going to happen? Well, I don't know if you can see. There's a drop of water on him. So I think, oh, and my, and my sponge is collapsing. I think we may have reached um, the limit of how good of an umbrella this sponge is making. Um, yeah, he's got some droplets on his back now and his feet are wet because it stopped absorbing the water. So that umbrella did okay for a while, but it did start to get too heavy. Um, and you can keep playing with that and see um, how much water it would take or if you can come up with a better umbrella, maybe better than a sponge, because as we know, sponges do absorb water, but at some point the water becomes too much and it comes out almost like a cloud. Just like we were saying how the clouds have all that water droplets in it and they get too heavy and the droplets fall. That's what's gonna happen with the sponge. I also have here a cupcake, cupcake holder that I can, well, I don't know, I can maybe put, maybe I can put this like this, make some sort of an umbrella out of that. Oh, yeah, maybe I can fold it in half. Make an umbrella out of that. And stick this in there. I think if I had tape, I could do that. And see how this does as an umbrella. And dry him off. I, I, I poured the extra water out of my plate too, so it's not soaking wet. Let's see. I would 
have thought the water goes right through this, but it seems to be going over it. Um, he seems to be pretty dry under there. His feet are getting wet, of course, because he doesn't have boots. Um, but it seems like this cupcake thing, oh, it's starting to go through though. It is, it is starting to go through, but not as fast as I thought it was. I'm gonna go through, so they must coat this in something, I don't know. But you can try all different things from home. You can try um, paper plates, you could try tin foil, a plastic bag, whatever you like. Just try to make the best umbrella you can. Um, and you have these little straw bits to make to a holder for it or to push it up if you like, or you can just cr put it right over him like that and see. Oh, it's definitely starting to go through now. Um, he's still pretty dry except for his feet. So this, little, this is actually doing much better than I thought it would. It's starting to go through a little bit, you can see on the back, but nothing too bad yet almost as good as the sponge. I'm kind of surprised there's a lot of water in here and uh, he didn't get wet yet, <laughs> except his feet. All right, so enjoy pr uh, playing with different uh, designs for umbrellas. Let me know what you come up with, what's your best umbrella and have a lot of fun today and uh, make some rain. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next week.